Hello everyone, Chris here, and this is the first version of my new fully 3D printed hexapod that I've just finished assembling. So the goal was to make as many parts 3D printed as possible, so everything from the legs to the chassis to the bearings have been 3D printed. Uh, I also made another video on the 3D printed bearings that I'll link below if you're interested. Uh, so the only things that I, that I needed to purchase are a handful of M2, M3 volts, uh, the servos and the electronics. Uh, so before I continue, I should just say, please excuse this uh, horrible mess of wires. I know it hurts me to look at just as much as it, hurt, as it hurts you. Um, but as I said, I've just finished assembling it and I'm going to need to disassemble it again uh, to install some longer tibias in a day or so. Um, so I haven't gone ahead and cleaned up the wiring to make it look really nice yet. Um, see, these tibias are the same length as the femur. All right, uh, I plan for it to walk with horizontal femurs, so just kind of like walk like this. Um, so I had short tibias initially. Um, yeah, I thought that would be a cool looking looking walking gait. Um, but al although the servos do just fine to walk like this, like they've got plenty enough torque, um, the 3D printed chassis in here uh, is a little bit too... Um, it's just 3D printed with a very low um, infill, so it's a little bit flexible and warps under the moment. So I need to redesign the chassis a little bit to improve structural integrity. Um, or maybe I might even send it off to get laser cut from aluminium. Um, I have a new 3D printer design that I'm sending off soon to get cut, so it might be a good idea to uh, send that off with it too. Um, so I'll just have a quick chat about the robot for those interested, um, answer a couple of questions and everything. Um, but for those who just want to see it move, I'll put a link below so you can jump straight to that. So a bit about the hardware first. Uh, I'm using 18 of these high-tech HS 485 carbonite gear servos for each of the each of the degrees of freedom, uh, and they're all controlled from an SSC32 servo controller from Lynx Motion. Um, so under full load, these servos pull about 500 milliamp at 6 volts, uh, but they're never really at full load, um, especially this uh, coxa joint in here. Um, so after a great deal of empirical testing of each each of the individual legs, um, just simply by applying a manual load to it, um, more load than I would actually expect to see under normal operating conditions. I found that each leg draws a maximum of about an amp each, so um, that's six amps total plus about an amp for electronics. Um, so it's all powered by this uh, 2300 milliamp um, 30C nickel metal hydride battery. Um, so that provides, provides plenty of power and I get a good 15, 20 minutes of runtime from it. Uh, I don't have any battery level monitoring on there yet, but that is planned for the future. So all of the legs are reinforced with these idle links on the opposite side to the links connecting the server horns. Uh, this keeps the, links, the legs nice and rigid in their plane. Uh, so this is especially important because both the server horns and the legs themselves are made of plastic which can flex under a little bit of load. So each one of these joints consists of a 3D printed slew bearing, um, which not only minimises friction and allows for more accurate and reliable joints, um, but it's also lighter than simply putting a bolt through two pieces of plastic. Um, so as I mentioned before, I'll link the video uh, below that I made of the 3D printing, 3D printed bearings. Right, so uh, what software am I using? Uh, so currently for testing purposes, I'm using the Phoenix code written by Kurt Etchard and Juren Jansen at Lynx Motion. Um, I hope I'm pronouncing those names right, sorry if I'm not. Um, however, I do have my own kinematics and walking gates that I'm implementing on a Raspberry Pi. So that's going to be the next stage of the project, but just for testing purposes to make sure that all of the hardware is working correctly, I'm using uh, Phoenix code since uh, it's known to work and um, boy does it work well. Uh, so I had to make a few modifications to the Phoenix code kinematics and the SSC32 communication drivers uh, just to match my particular setup. But that aside, it was just a matter of adjusting the hex underscore CFG configuration files to specify my leg lengths and my body dimensions and uh, now it's working really quite nicely. So big shout out to Zan and Kurt E for writing this Phoenix code and making it available. So I do still need to do some calibration to get the legs nice and zeroed since the server horns use the standard C1242 splines. Uh, each one is going to have an error up to about 7.5 degrees, so it's not a huge error, but I'm sure that the motion will be a great deal smoother if I go ahead and sort that out. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll bother, since I'll, I'll only be sticking with Phoenix code for not too long, like probably not even the rest of the day. Uh, but I might do it at a later date when I want to compare my software with Phoenix, um, just to see if mine can be improved anywhere. Uh, anyway, enough of that, uh, time to see it walk. Okay, so here is the first revision of my hexapod robot in action. Uh, no calibration has been done, so it's still a bit wobbly and everything. Um, 
So we're running Phoenix code and using a PS2 remote to control it. And we can start him up and walk forward. So this is just the slow gate, so you can uh, see how the gate moves. Sidestep, sidestep the other way, turn around. I can switch on to the faster gate. Basically takes longer steps. Not quite stable. I need to uh I need to do some calibration so that the steps kind of uh land where they should go. But looking good for now. Yeah, it falls over a little bit when, when it's doing the fast gate. You can also go into body tilt mode. And twist. Oh, or I can go into... And I can lift up and down. If I go like this and then exit out, then I can yeah, go back to walking. Definitely need to uh, clean up those wires a bit, it looks pretty terrible, but that can come later. So I get a good 15-20 uh, minutes battery life out of it. change direction at any time, it's pretty cool.